Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. This is Mark. Today we're taking a look at the Stainmore Sharp and Eden Valley route from Steam Sound Supreme. I've kindly been given this uh, look at the route from its developer Ben Yates and I'm uh, really pleased to be able to show it off for him. It's an absolutely stunning piece of work uh, as you'll see as we go along. We're starting one of the 16 included scenarios here. We're on home from the seaside and this scenario takes you from T Bay across the Stainmore route to Barnard Castle. So we've got the uh, message on the screen there. It says, Good afternoon, driver. We start the approach to T Bay with a Saturday only return working to Barnard Castle. With a train packed full of day trippers returning from seaside at Sunny Blackpool. No problems have been reported and you are not booked to make any stops, so enjoy the run. The home signal in front of you will clear as you approach. So we're on the approach of T Bay here. This is on the West Coast Main Line, we'll just have to turn off and as we go through I'll explain a bit about you know, the, the route and uh, everything as we go along. So this first couple of minutes we'll be just heading through T-Bay Station, we'll be heading out onto the towards the same route towards Kirby Stephen. We're just approaching Kirby, uh, T Bay on the West Coast Main Line, heading north, coming through the goods loops. We've got to get down to 10 miles an hour for the upcoming junction across towards the Kirby Stephen line. So we'll do that now. As we're passing through, I'll have a look around here and I'll show you some of the detail and everything because it really is uh, beautiful. Everything that you see in this shop. Is essentially included with the route, there's only minimum requirements that you do need. I'll be going through those as well in a little bit. I'm going to pause the game for a minute while we're here. It's easier to do that now than explain stuff as I'm trying to go through. So I'm pretty sure most people already recognise this. This is T-Bay. So you've got the West Coast Main Line going straight on. You've got the former line to Kirby Stephen heading off to the right over there, which is where we're going to go. TB locomotive sheds here with the uh, Colwyn stage and everything, and then the Loom, Gar Loom Gorge behind us in the distance. Some lovely standard fours on shed. All locos and stock that you see in this scenario is included with the route. You get a huge selection of stock. You get uh, standard four, four six zero seen here included with the route, and you also get a green version of that, which you can see there. As well as that, you get the flying pigs. So you get the Ivat four MT locomotives, such as this one here. They're included with the route. I know that's been a long time waiting. And on top of that, you get some beautiful coaches. You get such as these Gresley teak coaches. You also get some Mark 1s. Just a huge selection of stock that comes with the route. I'm not sure if the Mark 1s are... I'm not sure if they're some Kuju V-skins or not. I can't remember if they're the original models or not, to be honest. You also get these wagons. A lot of these are you know, original wagons. They're all made by Phil Baines, I believe, a lot of these. They've got custom sounds and everything. Uh, it's just a super pack, so just like all these here. And some really nice ones with tractors and stuff on. Just out of this world. Really nice detail. And uh, we'll go along and we'll look through all this stuff as we're going through the room. In terms of the map, I'll just pause into that at the minute. We are currently right over here at T Bay. So you get the West Coast Main Line back. All the way through the Loom Gorge, you get to Low Gill, Rayrig, and then you get through Oxenholm, which is here. And then you get right down near to Carnforth, pretty much. You get down to Burton Home. So that's just north of Carnforth. You also get the line across towards Lindell. And Plumpton, which is over this way. 
So that's the start of the Cumbrian Coast route. It goes through Grange over Sands, and I've seen some screenshots of that, which are absolutely stunning. And you can go up here to the lakeside area. It's really quite an extensive route, and that's just the start of it. I mean, the main focus of this route, of course, is the Stainmore route. You also get the West Coast over Shap, as you can see on the left-hand side there, up to Penrith, which is at the top here. You get the Eden Valley route, which goes across to Warcop, Appleby, onto the SNC, into Kirby Stephen East. From Kirby Stephen East is where you pick up the actual Stainmore route, which goes across the Pennines, and uh, eventually ends up in Barnard Castle, which is where it meets up in theory and trains in reality with the Weir Valley route that's already available. So we'll pass through here now at T-Bay. We're going to head across to Kirby Stephen, then across to Barnard Castle. Some fearsome gradients on this one, and just uh, sit back and enjoy the trip. I'll go through bits as we're going along. I'll let the loco do the talking for the most part, though. So we're now heading away from T-Bay, we'll head off towards Kirby Stephen East, which is where we'll join the Stainmore route. Gradual 20 mile hour limit over here, it's uh, fairly flat for the first part and then it'll become a lot steeper as we go along. Black 5 in the background, that's a Kuju model, which uh, isn't used in any of the scenarios, the scenarios use the locos. They're included with the pack. So what this train is essentially recreating is a turning holiday special from Blackpool, going back across the Pennines, I believe heading towards South Shields, Newcastle area, full of holiday makers and day trippers that have been to Blackpool. Some of these workings were double headed by these four MTs, some of them were such as this one, single headed, the long ones obviously were usually the ones that saw two locomotives. Apologies if you do hear some banging in the background on the microphone. Um, got new next door neighbours that are currently moving in uh, and they're basically ripping the house apart. So I will have to keep muting the microphone. It's going to be going on for a few weeks so I can't exactly hold the video unfortunately.
about 10 miles to Kerberstein East. Now in terms of foliage and stuff like that, you'll notice at the moment I've got the BP trees showing up. By default they're going to come with good trees and use those. There's a patch that will be put over there where you can change it easily to either the DTG trees uh, that you see in most of the rooms. The okay, Gaelic says West Coast Main Line over Shaft for those. Um, there's this patch as well which I've used which is the one that was the one we've got which is uh, trees in. So you've got three choices there how you want the audience to be. How nice they're getting going. Heading along the valley now. And eventually we'll start climbing up after Gaze Gill. We'll start climbing up towards Kirby Stephen. We'll cross under the settlement Carlisle as well on route to Kirby Stephen East. Most of the routes sort of for 40 mile an hour, 50 mile an hour. Certainly the main line is. And we are now on the approach to Gaze Hill Station. I'll just pause the game as we're going through here because you can see some of the stunning detail that uh, Phil Baines has put into these assets because he really has done an absolutely uh, beautiful job. I'll bear in mind some of my settings are a little bit off so everything's a bit washed out at the minute. Um, but he's done a really nice job with a lot of assets for this route with so many, you know, such as signs and station buildings and waiting shuttles, posters, you know, pretty much everything that you could imagine. And notice there it says like LNAR on the posters and stuff, that's because this line was the LNAR's way of getting across the Pennines in, in reality. Um, it was their route from the east side of the country, hence why this train obviously came across from uh, Tyneside. But some really lovely detail. There's even stuff such as these little bridges and stuff that you can just take screenshots everywhere you look on this route. Other things such as the buses and just a, uh, a fine collection all around, really. And there's other things that I like these, like with the signs and the good stepper and everything, and the uh, Colton stage. You can just see how much work's gone into this route. I know it's Ben's been working on this route, Ben Yates has been working on this route for years to get it to where it is, and he's done so much research into it with uh, Peter Walton's fantastic books and stuff. Um, and obviously the route is de dedicated to Peter Walton because without him it would have been impossible. So we'll continue on through here now and uh, carry on up the valley. Seizing off the power now because we're uh, nicely up to the speed limit. And we'll see the line gradually climb as we go along here. It's along this section where the road actually goes these days. If you go along the road towards Kirby Stephen, you can notice just how straight it is. I think it does follow the trap bed for some of the way along here, probably. So as I said you get 16 scenarios with the route, most of them are with this loco or the standard 460 uh, locos. A variety of passenger and freight services. These lines were always really quite quiet and rural and stuff so you're not going to see 10,000 AI trains on the uh, on these on these side routes. You obviously see quite a lot on the west coast route and stuff, uh, certainly more major route. But these are really the little lines and, and the amount of beauty in them and stuff is just stunning and they're, they're quite challenging lines to drive as well. So you can see the detail there with the uh, paths and everything and the, the river 
as it follows the course around. You can see we're starting to lose speed now as we start climbing more steeply. So now it's time to make sure the low code does a bit more work. Keep the speed in. One in 111, it will steep and be on that as well. Coaches do come with passenger views and custom sounds, so this is one of the Mark 1s. It's the only one that we've got a passenger view on this one, but some of the Gressler coaches as well do have custom sound sets. I love the telegraph posts as well, they go along the entire route. With the wires and everything sort of drooping down. See on the map we're heading across now from T Bay across towards Kirby Sea. We've got a train winding away 43076, which is another one of the locally based um, either foreign teams. No, the distance signal is actually on here, so uh, we'll have to ease off on the assumption that we're not going to get a clear run through. We're heading towards Raven's Tungdale. And even the signal wires on the side of the trap there, which is nice. Put the brakes in. Not sure if this might be where the line goes to single track or not. Can't remember. Yeah, it is where the line goes to single track, so I suspect we'll be uh, held around here for the train coming the other way that I mentioned. So we're getting drawn in by the first signal, and then we'll pull up to the second one, I would imagine. Gonna get the brakes in. That's per real life. Once the driver, once the signalman can see that you're uh, gonna stop at the signal, and usually they'll pull the uh, leap so you can move forward. Should open the regulator a bit to keep us moving. Pressing control and tab seems to have pulled the signal off there. Although actually no, that would have been the one behind me, so I think the signal actually pulled off by itself to be honest.
So we've now got a clear signal so we can accelerate a bit more. So these scenarios have been put together by Robert McGregor, I believe. Uh, he's done a really good job with them as well. Looking at this one, I love the start with the uh, yeah the AI uh, the AI train moving past and us taking control as it went through. It was uh, a really interesting way to start, and liking that with a little bit of AI interaction there as we approached as well. So we're crossing over now. As you can see, we're going to go onto the single track, and this is where we start climbing up now to meet the Settle and Carlisle, we go under that and then we go down into Curtis Stephen East. The Settle and Carlisle of course was Curtis Stephen West. On an 88 gradient. Nice how you got the uh, old bottle shot on the other side there. When you're in the cab view as well, you got all sorts of different camera views such as that one. I like this one, on top of the roof. See, we're going over the summit there. Quite a steep drop down now. I think it's around here where we, uh, yeah, go under the uh, Settle and Carlisle Smart Ale where the viaduct is. So we'll have to get some brakes in here because we're going to be going steeply downhill. Looks like a typical British summer, it's. Uh, Gonna be snowing in the Pennines. Snowing, snowing. They're not that bad in British summer. It's gonna be raining in the Pennines. This is the viaduct that we're going to go over. This is actually a footpath, I think, in real life these days. One that I've actually considered going to visit myself, but never have.
Pretty cool bit of AI, 37 going along the uh, Settling Carlisle above. As we go under the viaduct. So that's Settling Carlisle, Carlisle to the right, Settle to the left. As we uh, head down towards where Smaldall Station used to be. Give a bit of breaks. Continue dropping down 1 in 77 again, so need to continue with the braking. Once we get to Kirby Stephen, that's where we start the actual climb up towards Staymore Summit. Really steep climb. And we're now heading actually into Kirby Stephen, actually, as we're coming down here. Kirby Stephen East is of course where the, um, the Stamo Railway Company is actually based these days and they're hoping to rebuild uh, good chunks of this line but they're hoping to go towards Walcott first and then obviously try and get back up towards Stainmore. The big blockage in the way of doing that is the amazing Bella Viaduct which is missing. Um, we'll see that as we go along the, uh, the route soon. It's a marvel of engineering it really is. We've got a 15 mile an hour limit about half a mile, so we're going to be coming towards Kirby Stephen. So that's the Eden Valley line on the left that heads up towards Appleby uh, and then across to Penrith. Um, that's the bit that open to reopen, I believe, back towards Appleby and uh, Warcock. So we had a distant signal there, so we could be expecting to stop. In a moment, and there's a lot of train actually heading along the walk up line. Well, that might be the E4 locomotive that we've not seen yet. Yeah, it is. That's the E4 loco that comes with this route. So we've got the road as well. Sun's coming back out again now. Kirby Stephen East is where the engine sheds used to be and where they have headquarters of the newly formed State Mar Railway Company are. This is where the engine sheds and stuff were and there was a few locomotives based here. It's Kirby Stephen Junction, so this is where we joined the Eden Valley Line. I'm going to get a screenshot so coming to you. I love the ambience as well with the bird sound and stuff, it's brilliant.
So you got the loco sheds. I'll show you around here because it's uh, uh, worth a look around. So you got the loco sheds here. So this is the 260 variant of the standard four that you get with the route as well. So not only do you get the standard four, two, uh, 460 BR1, you get the BR260, and then you get the IVA version, which is this one over here and the one we're driving. Of course, as with all Steam Sound Supreme things, you get the sounds and everything that are really good. Custom sounds, all sorts of uh, various things. The uh, so far really enjoying. I'm, I'm really enjoying driving it. This is Kirby Steven East Station. This is the bit that's actually um, been reopened these days. Be really good to see uh, preserve, the preserved site sort of expand a bit more. And we're going through through the signs and everything nicely uh, laid out with stock. So you can instantly see we're straight onto our 172 gradient as we're leaving there. Some uh, lovely looking snow plows as well, nice there. Of course it's uh, had its fair share of snow incidents up here in the past. I'll go into those a bit later when the locos quieten down because it's going to be quite loud for a while now. We are now on the main climb, two stage or something. Which is
So we're now on to the last section of the climb towards Stainmore. Not far to go on it now. About six miles. I've been climbing most of the way since T-Bail and that bit down through Smardale to uh, Kirby Stephen. The A66 trunk road these days goes sort of on the other side of the valley over there. And you can actually see the track uh, track better this route working its way up. There's still some bridges and stuff and uh, even trackside huts and things left in the, where the line used to be. And we'll soon be coming up towards where Bella Viaduct was. Let's see where it was. There it is, Bella. And that was one of the main landmarks in the whole of Northern England really I suppose in terms of railways. Wise, it's one in sixty all the way up here. It's really uh, quite a slog. views and stuff that you get. So Bella is around the next curve whilst we're working up the straight to, towards this curve. I'll uh, take a look. We've got the signal box here, uh, concrete sort of design, pebble dash, I guess it's called, or whatever. Uh, you got the, the signal wires and stuff, so much detail, even where they actually go around the reel and everything. And uh, the semaphores, I believe, they're custom completely as well from the ground up. Quite nice 3D indenting and stuff. All sorts of little trackside uh, boxes, point clips, trackside huts. But the main thing for, that's uh, Key thing for this feature uh, is the, the actual viaduct itself, Bella Viaduct. Just simply a marvel of engineering, really, in my opinion. It's amazing. And the custom asset in TS is no uh, slouch either. So, this is, as I said, it's been done by Phil Baines, I believe. Uh, really impressive model. It's a shame this viaduct obviously was lost when the line shut in 1962. But it's a really impressive structure. No matter which way you look at it, it's impressive. Oh, I'm still putting coal in there, I don't realise. But I love the work that uh, I know Ben's going into a lot of work with these walls and stuff, and I think he's had like a fed up of seeing him for the rest of his life probably because he's done so many of them but the walls and the gates and everything it's all been uh, done little scenes like that with the bike guy with his dog just everywhere you look on this route there's a little feature that you'll see that's uh, been put a lot of care and attention gone into it and the walls like I said are all added in to aim paint carefully done as well you can see on the wall on the uh, other side of the valley there it's really like patched where he's gone around with the brush and really taking his time doing it. As I said, it's just taken, I think it's certainly a, around five years, if not over five years, it's taken. Because the amount of research that goes into a seam here is just ridiculous. For starters, never mind one of this size. There's over 100 miles of track. But uh, just enjoy this as it goes over the viaduct.
So it's 18 miles for us now to Barnard Castle. Once we get to stay more, it's basically downhill all the rest of the way. Uh, and when we get onto the downhill quieter section, I'll be able to read out more facts about the route and what you get included. So when we're driving with steam locals, you always end up shouting over it. Coming up in a moment is the famous Bleef Gill, which is this section up here. And this is where the standard, uh, I think it was a standard two that got stuck in the snow and it was had to be left, literally had to be like burnt out and dug out and stuff. Um, it was a really like famous situation that happened. Uh, the locker was literally completely buried up here. I'm not sure exactly where it was, whether it was in that cutting exactly there or somewhere up here, but uh, was a ridiculous just sort of uh, situation to have ended up in. But when they came back to actually get the local out, they literally had to like set it on fire with rags and stuff to actually uh, you know, get it out of the uh, snow because it was frozen in so bad. You can really see the gradient here as we're going towards the summit. So over in the background over there is where the A66 now comes along that side of the valley real life. So our scrapes where the trap bed used to be. For this bit you can still clearly see. If you come along the road you can actually see this bit of the trap bed. We are now pretty much coming up towards the summit. We're just going to come around this last corner and then we go across uh, the summit itself. I love these uh, these views with the screenshots and everything. We can get the little bridge and the scene sort of going on.
half a mile to go now to the summit. One of the most lonely signal boxes around, I would imagine, this one up here. See, the signal's pulled off. And there's a loop and some sidings and stuff up here. There's actually a train coming the other way as well. So you got loops and stuff up here, you got signals, and like I said, the signal box stain more. The A66 is just there. In real life, it's a uh, dual carriageway these days, that. So here we go over the summit. Stain more summit 1370 foot above sea level. The hard part is over, enjoy your run down to Barnard Castle. So, as you can see, you got uh, custom signs and stuff up here. I think one of these signs, uh, a repainted version, is actually still there now. Stain more summit, so that's about 300 feet higher than Ace Girl, I believe. Ace Girl is about 1059, I think, so that sort of shows you just how high it is. But I like these scenes as well, like how Ben's managed to. Uh, Make the moorland sections interesting because they're quite hard to make interesting. Um, you know, different bits of foliage and stuff dotted about. Just going to see if we can catch the other AI going up the hill um, somewhere and see both of them at the once. So we couldn't let you. About to go into the 50 mile an hour limit, 55 mile an hour limit. Not going to bother too much with the fire now because we're kind of not going to need it really. We can hear the other loco climbing hard up the hill. I guess you can just see it over there. It's a double header on a passenger train by the locks. If we position ourselves somewhere around here, we should be able to see both of them. Seems like a good spot. So you can actually see the pair coming up the hill. And we'll be coming down the hill in a second. Don't know which one's going to arrive first. We'll just look this way because if we come flying past, we come flying past. Some good timing. I am speeding quite a bit there. So it's eleven miles now to Barnard Castle, which is where this route finishes. One in 68. I think that cottage, you can actually still see the remains of that one from the road. So, in terms of route requirements, you require a copy of Train Sim 2020, uh, which is available from Steam. 
you acquire the European Assets Pack, which if you own Train Simulator before September 2012, you won't actually need that. But if you bought Train Simulator after September 2012, you will need to buy that additionally. The Train Sim Academy, that should be a part of your game by default. The RSDL Foliage Pack should be bundled with Train Sim by default. Uh, and there's a file path that you can check for that. And then the AP Stations Pack, which is included with many DLC routes by DTG. Uh, but Steam Sound Supreme recommend Woodhead as a source of that if you don't have it for whatever reason. In terms of meeting the team, Matt Walmsley of Steam Sound Supreme. Matt is the co founder and now sole person running Steam Sound Supreme. He can often be seen at Ertage Rail as recording sounds. Matt has a fine reputation for sounds that breathe life into train simulator locomotives. He has a good ear, the left one. Uh, and then it says Ben Yates, the route builder and project leader. Ben has been a developer for TS for many years. His first major route development was the Penrath, Keswick and Cockermouth route. Impressed with the quality of his work, Steam Sound Supreme recruited his services to lead this project to finish the um, Stain Morning and Valley route, which has been Ben's work. Uh, it's really good, as you'll, I'm sure you'll see. And you got Phil Baines, Philip Baines, the asset and root stock builder. Rolling stock builder, sorry. Many people will know Phil's work. He's worked on a lot of uh, things that are sold on the Steam Sound Supreme website, including wagon packs. Uh, the, the departmental hoppers pack, for instance, is a piece of Phil's work. You can find these and many more on the Steam Sound Supreme website. And he has a vast experience of creating high quality assets for train simulators, I'm sure you'll be seeing through this route. And then you've also got Chris Wilson of Caledonia Works. He's a locomotive builder, well known for creating locos at ridiculous speed, but uh, at really good quality as well. Um, and he's been helping out on this project quite um, a lot as far as I'm aware. Looks like we're getting ready for some rain again on here. The Staymore Railway Institute itself was opened in 1861 as a single line between Barnard Castle and T-Bay and it was taken over by the North Eastern Railway eventually. Only our days the line was mainly lit by the Class 21 and J25s, replaced in the 1950s by the standard Class 260s and 262 tank, uh, 262 tanks. Uh, January 1958 DMUs took over the local services but steam was retained on the summer services such as the one that we're driving here which would have been a holiday train from Blackpool. It's open now to Alt Bows at the moment. Everything pretty much in terms of freight would have had a banker over here because of the severe gradients and stuff, so the local passenger trains were really short trains. It'd be fantastic to see this route open again as a preserved railway. I think it's safe to say it really served no purpose to remain open as a, as a main line or anything because it's just redundant really unfortunately. I mean, it was never the same uh, Ben says since World War One. was when it was you know really much use. As a scenic line though it's absolutely stunning and uh, really nice. So we've only got six miles to go now until we reach Barnard Castle. As you can see all the work for the locos on the other part of the route is quite easy now. 
Even Tom could run this, but. For a 50 mile an hour limit in a minute, so I gotta put some brakes in. Forty mile an hour limit, thirty mile an hour limit. That looks like it goes up to fifty or something like that. I can't actually read the sign on the hood. We got the train down to fifty. Gotta get down to forty again, about half a mile. Going into the 40 limit, then we got deep delve viaduct in a minute, which is a 30 limit. So it's sort of gradually slowing down as we're going along this section, then we'll speed up again. Fantastic. I just love how the smoke is sort of sitting above the uh, train. So we've got to get this down to 30 mile an hour for this viaduct in a second. I hope we'll get a really good screenshot though coming across here. So this is obviously, as you can see, is a, a very similar design to the Bella viaduct. Essentially this exactly the same. In a more tree line valley though, that's uh, that's for certain. Ah, here we go. limits now back up to 45 mile an hour. Just three miles down to Barrack. Down through Lartington. 
uh, the Tees Valley Viaduct, uh, and then we'll be into Barnard Castle. I'm having a local passenger service going back over the hill. So show a mile and a half to go. About to come down over the Tees Valley Viaduct, which again is another stunning viaduct. It's actually a different design, though, as you can see, it's like uh, got concrete uh, stone pillars sorry, on this one. The actual decking is still very similar, though. Final approach now, Barnard Castle. Time to get the brakes in. 20 mile hour limit coming up. We're crossing over towards the platforms. And as I said, this is actually where you can meet up and you could, if you wanted to, you could carry on driving on the uh, Weardale route, which is available from Steam. Castle West Box. Not actually due to stop here. We'll have a little look around the station. Because this, I think, is probably my favourite one, to be honest, because you've even got a 3D sort of interior in uh, this bit. You can go outside. It's, uh, again, a different style building as well, because they're all reasonably similar. But uh, sort of the area under the roof and stuff's a bit different on this one. It's Kirby Stephen. I love the, uh, the work that's gone into it. It's really good. Signage, posters. So much research has uh, gone into these as well. You can really see that. Very impressive. So I'll just roll through. I'm going to pause the game as the train sort of got round out of the way. Because the scenario ends just sort of around the corner of half a mile or so. Nice level crossing, actually. That's really nice.
got the uh, engine shed over here. Great stuff. Crossings have uh, shut now as well. So I'll pause this one here. This route available from Steam Sound Supreme, £29.50. It is quite steep, I know. Uh, that's what you'll probably think when you uh, first hear that. A lot of people I know will and have said that already. But um, knowing how much work Ben has put into this route for, like I say, five years and more, and how many people have been involved and how difficult it has been to research and put the route together, I uh, think that's a fully justified price in myself. As I said, you're getting over, a, let's look at the size of the map alone, you're getting over 100 miles of track included with this route. It's just like huge um, and it's it's all first class scenery as well there's no you know bits where it's been rushed or anything like that it's, it's first class really good and uh, a lot of passion has gone into it you know you can really tell that Ben's enjoyed working on it and that uh, those that have been involved as well Phil and those that have uh, put the work into the assets and everything it's, it's really really well researched and detailed you know, even down to signs like this, I mean, this sign's nowhere near the, the railway. The railway's are, like, sort of over there. But they've actually put little signs like this in every single one of the yards that I've seen on the view. has, you know, such, such little details like that. You know, the cars parts outside the station. The scenarios that have got the detailing from uh, Robert McGregor that have been, you know, worked on, as you can see, and stock placed everywhere, and the research has gone into stuff like that. It's just marvellous, you know. Um... I really highly recommend it, and I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, don't forget, Tom's usually live on Twitch. I think it's now Tuesdays, Saturdays, about 8 p.m. Uh, he's usually live on there. You can keep it to date on the Facebook page, obviously, and he usually posts on YouTube as well. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. We uh, really appreciate your support, and uh, thanks as always for watching, guys. See you later. Goodbye.